All right, welcome everyone to Changemaker TV. I'm thrilled to have our beautiful Stacey Ray with us today. Thanks for joining us, Stace. Oh, I'm so honored. Thanks for having me, Judy. Oh, our pleasure. Um, I'm really excited about this conversation. And uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a chat about where we're going to take this. And uh, I'm sure you guys watching are going to really enjoy this. So take it all in and uh, maybe get your cup of tea ready, you know, or a, or a glass of wine, whatever time of day it is. Um, but let me just introduce Stacey a little bit. I mean, Stacey and I actually came in touch um, through another community that we're both uh, a part of um, and had, had, had kind of touched on each other and seen each other and, and uh, follow each other a little bit. Never really had the opportunity to connect until when we were in Bali in October and that was just a, a, a magnificent experience for both of us and uh, we really got to see each other. And, and connect on a, on a really great level. And um, so that's why I was really passionate and excited to have you on here, Stace, because um, I, I got to see just your gifts and also what a difference you're, you are making in the world and you're going to continue to make. So I, I feel like your message is just so, so important. Um, so Stace is um, really driven by supporting women in seeing their gifts and um, they're also their, their, their innate power. Um, and she's, uh, she's dynamic. She brings a holistic approach to living and also leading her life and a most fulfilling life at that. I'm going to let her really share her story, but she's developed an incredible platform. She's the founder of We Are Lady Alpha, um, an online, offline community, and uh, which is for ambitious women, which I love <laughs> and I'm a part of, and uh, you guys need to go check out. And she's the host of uh, Lady Talk Radio, so and the main voice on her blog, I am Stacey Ray. So dot com. So let I'm gonna let you go from here, Stacey, and we want to hear a little bit about your journey and your story of where you started and how you've got to where you are now. Yeah, thanks, Judy. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you and just to get to be in your corner. You are such an incredible powerhouse, and just getting to connect with you and see what you're up to in the world has been so inspiring. So thanks for having me. Thank you. I um I won't go back too far, but I, will, I think it's really important to share a little bit of kind of where I came from in my life. You know, I, I really had a lot of kind of a wide span of experiences really young. And, you know, my, my family, we, we traveled all over the world. I lived all over the place growing up, which was great perspective and really cool kind of learning experiences as a kid. And um, I know you live in Bangkok. I lived in Bangkok when I was a kid and just loved it. And then, you know, right around the age of like 13, my family started to kind of like part ways. There was a lot of different things going on in the home. Um, I started getting bullied in school. And then by the age of about 14, 15, I actually dropped out of high school and found myself kind of in a, in a very interesting sort of experience where I'm um, kind of just running on the default beliefs that I had about myself and some of the underlying um, pain that had been occurring for me in most of my life, but wasn't addressed. Obviously, we didn't have a lot of tools at that age. Mm -hmm. And my parents weren't really aware of kind of what was going on. Um, I found myself going into groups of kids and, and some young adults who were just not really living out. You know, they were living that more destructive path, going down that kind of sabotage lane, you know, and really finding a lot of different kinds of forms of leadership. I know we were exploring leadership in Bali and my exposure to leadership at that age was around power and manipulation and, and money and sort of that whole world of gangs and organized crime and drugs and all this stuff. So really early age, I was exposed to that. And, you know, statistically, like somebody who finds themselves there usually doesn't find themselves, you know, like 15 years later as a life coach, which is kind of a, a beautiful journey that I was on. But it was this really cathartic, really like, you know, hitting rock bottom, getting to this point when I was about 20, where I literally couldn't get out of bed. I was so highly medicated. I was on all kinds of antidepressants. I had acne. I was suffering from all kinds of autoimmune disease um, symptoms. And I just, I think just that fire that I think we all have in us, um, at that age, I just felt that little spark of that. And I just had enough strength in me and I think enough pride too. I think I had a little bit of pride going on where I was like, I just can't, this isn't how it ends. This isn't how the story ends for me. Yeah. And I, I got myself in to see a naturopathic doctor whom I'd actually seen when I was four years old as well. And when I walked into the office, he just looked at me and he said, oh, you're back. And he put me on a really clean diet. He got me taking some supplements and literally within about a two to three week period, I remember looking in the mirror, not recognizing myself. 
Wow. Literally did not recognize myself. I felt like a completely different human being. And so much of that anger and so much of that just sort of um, cloudiness that I had been living in started to lift. And I started to have a, just a, even just that inch, you know, opening the door, just that inch where I could just see something else was possible. Mm. And I started to feel like, okay, how many other people are actually experiencing their life this way and don't know that it's related to food? And so kind of my gateway to changing my life was actually through holistic health and nutrition. And mm. so I started to get really um, obsessively learning everything. You know, I wanted to learn, well, okay, well, why is it that people don't know about this? And I started really diving into that. And in essence, it kind of saved my life at that age. Um, going into my 20s, of course, I was like, on this, this, this mission now, right? I'm like, okay, I want to learn and I want to grow and I want personal development and I want food and I want healthy stuff and I want good friends. And I sort of just kind of like really starting to build my life, which I think is served me so powerfully at that time. And then of course I kind of hit this wall in about my mid twenties where I was like, you know, I'm doing all the right things, right? I'm kind of, I'm doing all the things that I've been told to do that, that are right to do that all of the successful people are doing. And yet I still feel like I'm coming up against these limiting beliefs, these kind of understandings of myself. I still thought of myself as being really broken, you know? And so of course in that I wasn't able to fully embark and embrace the life I wanted because I was still living out. I was just kind of operating on top of all of these underlying experiences of myself. And so through that kind of had to fall face first again, find myself in toxic relationships, just really, really not taking the care of myself that I desire and that I deserved and really finding myself in a, in a really traumatic uh, experience yeah. of my life and really having to get honest. And that was one of the most pivotal moments for me was getting honest about some of the lifestyle choices I was making, some of the ways that I was showing up for myself. Um, kind of in my mid twenties, I found myself not being able to support myself through the things that I loved. And so ended up turning to um, working as an escort in the sex trade. And it seemed like a really simple experience at the time. I was like, oh, so many girls are doing this. This is just not a big deal. It was very secretive. It's okay. But really the place I was making that choice from was believing that I didn't have a choice. Yeah. And, and that experience has shaped so much of the work that I do now, um, being on the other end of that and getting to do so much work with, um, not just personal development, but truly like personal empowerment, getting in underneath of what's really going on for us. Mm -hmm. And so many times now I see that same conversation and it might not look like women ending up there. It might not look like drugs or alcohol. It might not look like those things. But when we believe that we don't have a choice, we make decisions out of a place of sort of, um, you know, toleration or out of desperation or out of just thinking that there is limitation in some way. And so that's become a really big driving force for me yeah. and, you know, getting to actually really design my life um, from that point forward was a decision that I made. Like I'm no longer willing to live from a place of default or just kind of playing out the hands we're dealt in life. You know, I don't really believe in that. I believe we get a hand, a hand and then we get to like put cards down and pull big new cards in and we get to kind of organize what we want to play in life. And so, um, you know, I think, just what I want you to get from my story and my experience is that like, I literally am the example of transformation. Like there is so much possible for absolutely anybody. And it doesn't matter where you're starting or where you were, or where you are. There's just, there's endless cards for you to pick up and you can put any card down that you want. And so um, this journey has been like full and rich and, and tense and it's taken a lot of gumption and a lot of grit. And I just, every time I look at somebody now, I'm like, it's all possible. Like yeah. there's nothing off the table for you. So um, it's become my total passion. I'm like obsessed with, you know, personal development and women's wisdom and, and understanding behaviors and understanding all of these different things. And so um, really what I've created is all circulated around supporting women to really know they have a choice, first of all, and be able to go into whatever area that they feel so called to be in, whether that's in a career or relationships or anything. And just providing the tools and support, because that's what I always wanted. I always felt alone, you know, in what I was up to and trying to change my life and trying to feel better and trying to understand myself. I always felt like I was doing that alone. And so really what I've created and what I'm just so passionate about doing is holding space for women to relate. Because as you know, I mean, we just have so many inner workings that we can lean on each other with and grow together. And women, I think for forever have come together in community and supported and seen each other and held each other in that. And so that's what I've become really deeply passionate about. So that's kind of a, up to this point where I'm at and I'm just so excited about seeing so many more women in the world coming together. So.
Yeah, and I think you're so incredible at really holding that space as well. So that's that's definitely a gift that you have. Um, what I loved about what you shared around that story was um, when you were kind of at that that low point, you know, like high on drugs, and but you knew that there was like a little spark there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, what what was it that you mm. tapped into, or how did you know that that there was something more. It was it just a feeling kind of thing? What was that? I've explored this a lot, and I, I love that you asked me that because it's it, it's it's so hard to articulate. I'm going to do my best, but it's <laughs> it's like a feeling, and I think we all have that. And I think you know, I I used to live in this area of Vancouver where I'm where I'm from here, and. Um, it's one of the, the kind of worst areas in BC where there's just so many homeless people, so many drug addicts, so many people living on the streets. And I used to live in this kind of novelty area that was kind of, you know, kind of fancy that was like right next to that. Okay. And I always used to think the contrast was really bizarre. I was like, why is it that we pay all this money to live in this fancy area? And yet there's like people who are struggling to eat. Yeah. And something I realized living there, seeing so many people who were literally fighting for their lives was that that spark is in everybody. And if it wasn't, we would all just kind of, you know, at a hard point, we would just kind of roll over and die, right? Like we just, we all have that. And I think for me, what it was, was recognizing just enough in that moment that I did want to live yeah. and that there were things that made me happy. There were things that lit me up. And when I really kind of, um, besides just my thoughts of, of depression and anxiety and self-defeat, when I kind of just, just got super real with myself. I remember this moment actually really well. And just look, I was looking at myself in the mirror and just got so honest. I was like, I don't, I don't want to die. Like I just don't, you know, when I teased out the pain of if I stayed there for five years, it was excruciating and it was death or jail or whatever. And just in that moment, finding enough of that, like, yeah, okay. You know, and it was moment by moment, you know, I don't think that I mustered up enough strength. I don't remember exactly what it felt like in the moment, but I do know that it was moment by moment, like yeah. just enough strength to make one phone call or just enough strength to ask for support or, um, you know, hire a coach or hire somebody or work with somebody like you just, it only just needs to be moment by moment. You only need that micro strength. Um, but that spark was definitely that feeling of, um, unwillingness to give up. Mm. And I think my pride served me well at that age, you know, to be like, I don't want to be remembered this way. I don't want this to be my legacy. Mm. Um, you know, there was definitely a little bit tones of that and tones of drive. Like I'm better than this. You know, I know that I can overcome this. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that spark is in everybody though. I think it's a feeling of like, what if I can? Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I agree with you. I think that we all have something within us that knows that we're here for a purpose or for something greater than potentially what we're currently doing or, um, and this, yeah, like you said, a, a feeling or a knowing or a thought that comes in or, or whatever it might be. Um, and then I love also how you said, then it's just moment to moment. It's just, you know, each moment we have a choice. Mm -hmm. right? So at that moment you made the choice to at least take the first step and what that led to then is incredible. Mm -hmm. to really open up. Yeah. And, you know, for those who are watching who are perhaps in that similar situation, that's, that's all it takes. And mm -hmm. I think what you mentioned as well, asking for support, you know, how, yeah. how was that for you at that time? You know, going, <sighs> how is it for me now? Heck, I mean, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I still come up against that. I'm like, why am I not asking for support? Yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was probably the toughest piece for me, truthfully. Um, it was it was tough to be seen that way. And it was tough to admit that I didn't have it handled and um, that I didn't know. I think that was really one of the most challenging pieces and sometimes still is like, I, I don't know what's next or I need this right now. Um, but I think the biggest piece was just, just even again, it's like breaking it down into those small pieces, like one person, just, just getting one person enrolled in showing up for you. I think sometimes we can get in this idea of like, it's gotta be, we, we now need 10 people or we now need to take 10 steps forward or we need to do totally change our lives. And sometimes it's just this small little pivot. So yeah, asking for support, I think um, 
once once we it escapes our lips it becomes easier and it becomes more you know like yeah. but it's just it's just getting to that point and so sometimes it was you know sending the text and saying hey I, I really need to ask for support or just just doing something before I allowed myself to get in the way of it kind of thing yeah um but yeah get get you know who the person is I think always that you can that you can trust and that can hold space for you and and just or if it's a professional or somebody but just getting support and um you can change what that support looks like, you know, at any point too, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and, and the other thing that you were sharing through your, through your story, which sounded like, you know, a lot of sabotage, right? Self-sabotage. Yeah. You know, those different periods of your life. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, that can be a, a, a massive default trait out there, right? In, in totally. Um, yeah. And so what's happened now, what you mentioned was that kind of, uh, shift for you to move across, um, swing the pendulum, as you'd mentioned earlier when we were speaking, from really going all out, you know, strategy focused and hard working and, you know, applying yourself totally and committing yourself totally to whatever it is that you were doing and now being able to move across into the self-care and self-love. I would really love to explore this more because it's also something that I've been working yeah. on and so I'm sure there's lots of women out there and guys that just, you know, don't make themselves a priority and it does not yeah. give themselves the love and care that they want. So can you talk a little bit about how mm. you were able to make this shift? <laughs> It's one of my favorite things to talk about and exiting sort of this whole belief that I was broken and kind of trying to rebuild my life. I swung the pendulum really far in the direction of kind of overworking and overachieving and being really achievement focused. Yeah. And it was kind of coming from a similar idea of like, well, fix what's broken, you know? Okay. Well, you were so far in this direction. Now you got to make it happen. You, you're going to be this excellent entrepreneur. You're going to do all the things. It just sort of, it was coming from this place of kind of validating and proving and, and trying to evidence this belief that I was broken. And so it was, you know, a few years of that and beautiful lessons and learnings and all this kind of stuff. And then getting to really like burn out, like fully burnt out. About five years ago, I was in major adrenal fatigue, um, just totally blasted. I actually was in a, a coaching program and they took a video of me um, on the first day and I was proudly stating that I was working 18 hour days. Like I was just, so, I had sold myself on this idea of what, you know, uh, being an entrepreneur was and all this stuff. And it was at that point things started to really shift for me. I started to um, not only teach more about well-being, but started to listen to more of my teaching. And it's only been in the past few years where things have started to connect more for me. And it wasn't like a self-care conversation that I think a lot of us are having where there's a lot of boxes to check and it's like the daily routines and the morning rituals and all this kind of stuff, which is beautiful. I want, I want you guys to hear, like, I'm not saying that isn't, doesn't have a place because it so does. Um, and I actually kind of felt like that was maybe the template, you know, and I think that's why so many people are talking about them is because we can try those things on and go, okay, when I have a morning ritual like this, does that make me feel lit up? Does it make me feel really inspired and excited and ready to take on my day? Or is it just another thing to do? And so I started playing with that line quite a bit and finding that there was this beautiful, you know, experience of being really in the feminine, being really in the flow, kind of allowing, um, you know, kind of dancing our way through the day. And then there was this really kind of more hyper-focused on doing and checking boxes and single focus and getting things done. And these both had these beautiful um, experiences to them and, and benefits to them. And so being like a total productivity geek, and I'm really like all about, you know, being ambitious, getting things done, moving the needle, I started slowly, and this has been triggering to say the least, because I think I, I can be very kind of masculine and very like focused, that bringing in a little bit of this, okay, maybe I'm going to start my day by um, getting into my body and not like working out or, or yoga, because that was kind of my tendency, but like, just even just like rubbing my body with some oil and putting on a, a song and dancing around my bedroom. And I felt ridiculous the first time I did that. Like, I was like, <laughs> what am I doing? Like, have I been sold on something? What's happening here? But just really allowing myself as a woman, like as a, as a woman, and I think even men, you know, you have your own range of this experience too, is that as a woman, like allowing myself to get into my natural magnetism, because we are so fierce that way as women, we have this natural ability to 
to um, create and, and invite things in. It's just, it's part of our makeup and part of our, our ability, right? And so getting into that out of the head and into the body, right? First thing in the morning was one of the most um, powerful and also like really revealing ways to explore this. So I would say just even starting there and starting to see like, okay, wow, I have a lot of resistance to this or I have a lot of, you know, I have things to do. I've got to do this. And that experience, like just, just that taking on a practice in the morning of like getting in my body, dancing, giving myself a body massage taught me more about productivity <laughs> than all of the Pomodoro timers combined and all of those things. Like, and so here's, here's what I mean by this. I just started to get that I had been driving from this place of my head and driving from this place of um, almost fear even of getting this done and creating this and pushing that needle. And when I actually relaxed into listening and nourishing my body, all of a sudden things like um, eating salads or um, going for a walk midday or meditation or these things started to just naturally become easier because I wasn't forcing myself to do them. It started my day in this state of um, honoring. So throughout the day, it was more natural for me to keep honoring and it was more natural for me to feel creative and to feel expansive and to feel happy and in my body and almost activating that sense of pleasure and possibility right away. So for someone like me that came from a lot of checking boxes, mm. that was like, it was literally a complete disrupt to my system. And it brought this sort of, um, this way I can describe it is like this flush to your cheek of just kind of feeling like, oh, wow, okay, I can, I can just feel into myself versus trying to create something all mm. the time. Yeah. And so that was kind of like the exploration that, that started this for me. And I just got so jazzed and I still am so jazzed about the cyclical nature of us as women because we naturally are revolving on this kind of four week cycle. Even if, even if our menstruation is a little bit off or in some way it's, you know, it's not exactly four weeks or whatever, it doesn't matter. There's still going to be a cyclical nature to how we sort of operate in the world. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're just not men, right? We're not like more lovelier versions of men. We're women. And so I started to get really into, and this is something that I love to work with people on, is the, the differences, the natural flow that we go through and how that looks for self-care and self-honoring. Because self-care one week might look like, you know, dancing around in your underwear. The next week it might look like sleeping for an extra hour. And the next week it might look like reading a book and getting super excited and, you know, marching around your living room. Like it, it always is going to look different. And that, that's a conversation I'm really passionate about busting up is that self-care is not just the same all the time. It's really about starting to trust and listen and honor and play and just allow yourself that, that inner kind of guidance and knowing around what do I need? Yeah you know, throughout the four weeks or whatever. And so that's something that I'm really, really passionate about is the cycle is a measurement and sort of a, just, I know you love the tools too, of like how to get to know ourselves better, you know, and this is the cycle and how it works is something that um, gives us so much insight and just data, you know, about how we work and what might be a better time of the month to book all of those sessions or all of those appointments and what week we might want a little less caffeine and a little bit more um, acknowledgement or gentleness or chocolate or, you know, so just kind of using some of these tools. So that's what I, um, just to kind of wrap that in a bow, that's kind of the way that I've started to explore this more and more is to look at ways that we can understand the, the flux and flow and some of our tendencies and just noting like, um, especially if you are a high performer, when you find you go into overwhelm. So that, that kind of starting point of the overwhelm cycle is really telling about maybe that time in the week or that project or when those amount of things start to come in for you, when to put little things in place. So it's kind of a, a way of measuring and also just intentionally injecting you know, things that support you ongoingly. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. It's like even, even me thinking about, you know, like that little <laughs> morning. Yeah. Right. Massage is like making me feel like really uncomfortable. <laughs> right. 
Right. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and, the, and when we can do something like, we all know this, right? It's like, what's predictable for us is predictable. And when we shift it and do something else, we break a pattern. We're just suddenly exposing something that was potentially there and we were just operating on top of it. And for me, I was so uncomfortable with the idea of not starting my morning productive. And when I stopped doing that, there was this access to like, well, why? Like, what is it that I believe about um, taking an extra hour for myself in the morning that, that has me in this fear. And I think it's different for all of us. Of course, there might not be fear there, but there might just be some level of like, can, can I take care of myself in this way? Yeah. Like, you know, and yeah, I got sick once a month for like years, years and years and years. And one of my coaches asked me, what are you actually sick of? And I just, I was like, I'm sick of not having time to just chill. And so I started booking in two hour slots every other day where I just throw my hair in a bun and can do whatever I want. Mm. And I haven't, I get sick, you know, the odd time, but not once a month. That's for sure. Yeah. It was the only time that I allowed myself to actually throw my hair in a bun and just relax. You know? Yeah. Oh, totally. It's really easy to, uh, I, I come from that place as well, you know, doing, 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 got to really be, you know, in action and productive. And yeah, I, I, I've really altered that now, but I think a lot of, people out there similar to me that it's like, well, if I'm chilling and relaxing, then I'm not getting done what I need to get done. Yeah. You know, which, of course, then, you know, if you really think about that, that doesn't make sense because mm -hmm. we need rest, we need recovery and we need to, you know, give back. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I totally relate to that as well. Being able to lock in time for myself. That's like, you know, I block mm -hmm. out an afternoon now scheduled my clients so it's on specific days block out afternoon that's just my time a couple of days a week um and honoring that and being able to withhold those boundaries you know mm, can also totally. be the, you know the next opportunity to be <laughs> to be challenged in that as well um yeah which i i guess you've experienced that as well you know? <laughs> yeah totally you know, being, being able to but then in terms of you know listening to your body any tips of, of what we could, you know, and that those people watching, um, I, I guess it's unique and different for everybody, but, and maybe just an exploration, like what you've kind of said, you know, exploring different things and seeing what works. And right now I feel like I just need to do nothing, you know, or whatever it might be, you know, how's that yeah. been in terms of that exploration of when yeah. you need a break or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. I love that question. Cause I think there's this like, idea I had of there was this like right answer where I was like, okay, there's this right amount of time or not right around amount of time. Um, the biggest thing for me has been making it easier for me to have highly productive times and also making it easier for me to have highly nourishing times. Mm -hmm. So I was overcomplicating a lot of things for a long time. And I think a lot of us is like, if we're kind of in the tendency of overachieving or, or overworking, there can be this tendency of like, just simplify, like wanting to simplify. So looking at our schedule and going like, what really doesn't have to be on there? I think one of the biggest pieces in this whole exploration is just from total self-honoring and self-love and really looking at how can I increase my performance in the times that I'm working and increase the amount of nourishment and fulfillment I feel in the times that I'm not working yeah. is sometimes just getting really real. Like maybe that thing is not important for you to be doing and you can delegate it. Or maybe you can, you know, create more in, in two days a week and just focus on one day a week being off. I think we have to get really honest yeah. and even just take a, a, take a knee for a second and just pause and really look at how things are going. Mm. Like, is this working? you know, the way things are going. If it is great, I don't like, I don't think there's a right way and a wrong way. Like sometimes we have seasons in our lives where we work really hard and there's a lot going on and that's beautiful and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm really kind of, I have this resistance to the word balance for that reason, because I think that there's harmony is more, I think what, what I see is possible for us as people who are, are creating things in the world and, and moving towards what really lights us up. Sometimes it does look like working 18 hour days and, you know, and choosing to have self care on certain days too, but it's a harmony. It's kind of bringing it all together to find that melody of life, not trying to balance two opposing forces of work and life, you know? Yeah. Um, 
So I think it's getting really honest, first of all, you know, and really listening. Like there's usually some kind of internal friction if we know that something's just not working. Like I dreaded, I would sit at my computer for so many hours a day and really not be getting a lot done because I was just, in this, I was coming from this place of scarcity and lack and fear and kind of like just trying to drive the car with like yeah. sugar water, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I think when we can just kind of get honest and go like, is this working? Is this working for me? Like, am I happy? Am I lit up? Is this like, am I doing the work that I love to do? And is it coming from the place I really want to be coming from in my life? I feel like that in and of itself, just that question, if we can sit in that and go like, is this working? And if yeah. not, how, what, what is it that I'm, that I'm hanging on to potentially in my environment or in my scheduling or in my work that isn't serving me? You know, um, yeah. that's a big one. And oh, love it. Love that. Through, that lis through listening, like yeah. really starting to listen, I think we can start to access that. Because I don't think anybody can tell us, you need to take a break today or mm -hmm. tomorrow you need two, two hours off. Only we know that. And I think just starting to kind of reconnect that cord of communication in ourselves of knowing that we can trust that nudge when we get, hey, you know what, you need to take an hour off and go, go for a walk. Um, you know, kind of learning to to hear that language that our body and our heart and, and our mind is speaking to us so that we can start to navigate that really clearly. Um, because yeah, I don't think there's a right answer, but I think that we already kind of know and just starting to honor it a little bit more. And sometimes it is, uh, you know, trying out an exploration, like taking an hour in the morning and giving yourself a body massage and seeing what comes up for you to kind of access like, okay, hmm, interesting. I have a yeah. lot of resistance to this or I have no resistance to this, you know? So sometimes it's trying on new things, trying on a template, someone else's template of, of what this can look like and just seeing how it's working for you because yeah. it is personal, you know, sure. but that listening, that listening and honesty with ourselves, I think is the, the key first step, you know? Yeah. I love it. Great question. You know, is this working? Listening. Cause so, mm -hmm. so many of us are really disconnected from our bodies and from ourselves. Yeah. From our emotions, from our feelings, you know, it's mm -hmm. easier to shut it out and go, you know, yeah. got to do all these mm -hmm. things, got to get all this like, done and take care of everybody else. Yeah. Tell me when, when's it, like, tell me what to do. Like I, I was like that a lot when I was in that state. I was like, just tell me like how to feel better. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, I'll just do it. Like, just yeah. tell me what to do. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So listen, you know, ask yourself, is that working? Listen, really listen, trust yourself. Cause you know, I think that's mm. a really important message there that you that you that you mentioned. Mm. Um, yeah, wow. And so, in terms of in terms of you getting yourself into an inspired state, like what are what are the things you know? Is it like what we've been speaking about that helps you with your creativity and mm. being inspired to create a be more of who you want to be and deliver what, you know, more to the people that you're there for and so on. Yeah. You know, it's definitely, you know, I think access points to a lot of it is, is that self-honoring and real self-honesty and connection to myself, but it's been a daily practice, you know, for me to really remember why I do this, you know, and sometimes I can lose focus of that. I think we all can. And it's just bringing myself back of like, I, I am so driven by um, the pain that I see so many people in and that like, I feel that and it, it, it will get me out of bed so fast, you know, um, when I get connected to that. So sometimes I can feel myself getting into this, like, you know, getting into the working mode or getting into the like, you know, kind of, oh, just plugging away or creating social media ads. Like we can get really lost in the details of stuff. Um, but for me, it's like that daily practice. I'm really into journaling. I, I have felt that has been one of the biggest keys for me. And I think it's different for everybody, but journaling and visualization have been two practices that I, I feel the difference when I don't do them. Yeah. And I can literally see the difference in my performance when I don't do them. And it sounds so simple, but it just allows me to get reconnected and to just process and sometimes even just get some of those swirling thoughts out of my head mm. so that I can just be creative and be open and be clear. Um, 
that was a something I just started kind of doing naturally was like just to get clear in the morning before I got into my work mode because my work is very creative. I, I have to constantly be kind of doing things and I've got a new website and content creation, all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, when it comes from this place of should or have to or proving, validating, all of these kinds of kind of, you know, concepts, uh, it doesn't feel creative. It feels very restrictive. And so for me, it's been a lot of just practicing getting into my body, getting really connected to what drives me. And that was one of the things that really had come through when we were in Bali was just like getting getting almost reconnected to that anger too, you know, like what really pisses you off in the world can be such a driving force. And not to say that you're just going to go around blasting anger everywhere, but it's just to get you connected to that fire and that spark in that bigger way. And for me, one of the ways I can do that is to just first like verbally puke on the page can help. And then just like really remembering like, who, who am I? What is this for? You know, like what, what is this for? And who, who am I, um, driving for today. I, I heard this on a podcast once and it just cracked me up and I think about it all the time. Um, he said, uh, he said, literally he gets up in the morning, he looks at his board and it says, you are going to die. Go find the others. And it just, it just, to me, I'm like, what if it's just one day at a time? Like you get up and it's like, this is the day go find the others. Like go find the people who are your people who are ready for this yeah. and who want this message and who are calling it in, you know? So like that gets me really jazzed up. And I think it's just, for me, it's that daily practice. It's every single day. Like literally I have to get into possibility every single day, or I just start making excuses sometimes too. Right. Yeah. So that, that inspiration for me is, um, it's very visceral, you know, it's very like in, I feel that. And, um, it's been a practice of just daily getting in there. Yeah. Um, I love that. What a great little message to have on your board every morning. when you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so true. You know, if we really think about it, like this could be our last 24 hours or, you know, yeah. Yeah. we don't know. So mm-hmm. this is it. Like yeah. right now, this is as good as it's going to get right, yeah. right now, you know, um, and like, so, right now exactly. <laughs> yeah. and now, <laughs> yeah. So, it, you know, it's, what are, what are you waiting for? You know? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's, that's when the inspiration leaves is when I get complacent. It's when I get into the, the daily habits and sort of just like, just kind of going along. But when I can really like, I, I have made this new commitment around doing something new every day. And that it scares me. Like it really does. Cause every day I'm like, it's shocking my system. And I think, you know, I think I've been one of those people definitely who has moved away from pain a lot in my life and moved away from things that could potentially like trigger me or send me into a loop. And now I'm, I'm like, I'm cultivating a deep sense of pleasure and connection to myself and starting to like, just allow myself to create things from a place of pleasure. But I'm also like, just releasing this fear I've had to triggering and, and being in pain. Cause I'm like, there's like, let's jolt ourselves a little bit. Cause like, come on, this, this, this is our lives. You know, these are the moments that we look back on and remember. And so that, that drives me a lot. And sometimes I have to almost reel myself in cause that driving force, I can be like, Oh, this is legacy. Like, this is what, you know, this is what I'm going to remember. This is what people are going to remember me by. And it can send me into the workaholic again. So it's a lot of that dance of, go and slow and go and slow, you know, and just kind of finding that sacredness in the small things too. Cause I think um, when we get into that hyper focus on moving forward, sometimes we can lose that um, presence to what is, you know? And so just practicing like, you know, looking at my water bottle right now, sitting on my desk and just being grateful that I have water to drink and yeah. I have this great lip balm and, you know, my favorite mechanical pencils. It seems silly, but these are little things that presents me into the moment as I'm going through my workday too, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, and being present, you know, is, is a beautiful state. Being grateful as well, being present to the moment um, is a great way to really connect in. To yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> just felt myself even this moment, just get more present. Like sometimes it's just that thought of like, Oh, like just yeah. to be present. Like, yeah. wow, what a concept. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful concept. Um, wow. I love it. I, I, um, I'm inspired to get myself back into journaling as well. It's something that I, mm. 
kind of go in and out of and I know that when I give the opportunity to work to my clients, they absolutely love it, get so much out of it. Um, but like you said, you know, yeah. some people, it really gels with them and, and others yeah. not. But, um, yeah, I think it, it, like what you said, you know, being able to gain clarity, dump out whatever it is, it's kind of that's swirling around and going on, on mm. up here can really clear space and mm. uh, open up again at just another perhaps a deeper level of connection, right? Connecting into mm. what, what am I feeling? What am I experiencing right now? Or what's going on for me? Mm. Um, is it, yeah. Do you find that it helps you in that, in that sense as well? Even as you were just saying that, I was just thinking about like, okay, what was that like for me even this morning? I think the biggest piece to journaling for me was I was trying to show up and get it right for a long time. I was trying to show up and be like, okay, this is how you journal. And sometimes it, it, it was like, okay, you know, kind of a little silly. But what has been so powerful is kind of what you were just describing, like just being present to what is, like what is here for me right now? Um, because I have a tendency, and I think if, if you identify as somebody who's like a, a high achiever, um, sometimes we have a tendency, especially if you know a lot of strategies, to kind of like, just go right and just kind of move through and and you know there's a lot of beautiful strategies that help us do that and that's not a bad thing it's just about maybe we want to acknowledge some of the other things there too so that you feel like oh okay i'm not just i don't have this like tick 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 in the background that's maybe not getting expressed or heard or whatever and so that was kind of my tendency for a long time was just to kind of go and so I, this practice of just like <sighs> sitting in it and kind of going what is here for me what is this that i'm present to today yeah. um just really allowed me to not only just honor what was there, but also just get really like clear. Okay, cool. So I am noticing I'm feeling some fear or frustration or anger or sadness. Like what do I need? Um, and that can be a great guide to our self care too. Like, what do I need today? If I'm feeling tender and maybe it's the week before my, my period, maybe I don't feel like driving myself into the ground with some self care practice that didn't feel totally aligned. So I think there's something to be said about that and just really tuning in and trusting, you know, if there is tenderness there, maybe you need to dance a little bit, or maybe you want to go for a walk or get a hug or, you know, um, have a phone call with a friend or something that feels like it, it kind of nourishes you in that way in that moment. Yeah. And, um, just a side note on that. I think there's a difference between like honoring our feelings and kind of sitting in the feeling, you know? Um, and that's what I feel like journaling can be so powerful for is like, instead of just sitting in it or, you know, trying to kind of fight it or resist it is actually seeing what's there, honoring what's there and then moving through it. Yeah. You know, so that, that has been a really cool way to do that for me personally. And sometimes I'm doing this on the page and, you know, like, <laughs> I know, you know, sometimes it's free flow, beautiful, creative stuff coming through. And sometimes it's just a brain dump and that's yeah. okay. It's just, it's your space to do that. And I think we all crave more spaces where we can just be. And so to have that journal, just be a sacred space that you just show up and anything that comes through is perfect. Yeah. I love it. Can in itself be a really sacred experience, you know? Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I love, I love just the whole suggestion of, you know, not needing to get it right. There's no right way or wrong way yeah. or it's just whatever it is for you. Because I was the same as you. I was like, well, what am I going to write about today? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I don't have anything to say, you know, which yeah. I probably did. But yeah. Yeah, it's like, ah, you know. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I started them with like, I walked the dog today. And, and like, you know, sometimes it starts a little rocky. Not going to lie. <laughs> um, it's just sometimes it's just like, just, that free flow, I heard an interesting concept even of just, just asking, like even like, um, like dear voice or dear higher power or dear spirit or dear God even, yeah. and then asking a question and just free flow writing. You don't even have to look at the page and just see what comes out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that can be really powerful too, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And, and, and potentially be quite amazed with what comes through and what comes out. That's the exciting part. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and just just before we wrap it up, there's there's one thing that you mentioned that I'm really really passionate as well, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to see if you've got any words of wisdom around this for those people listening. But um, it's around people in terms of a lot of people that I work with are in this position that, that they feel that they're stuck, right? Stuck, no mm -hmm. option. 
And you mentioned that, you know, something that you're very passionate about is working with people, you know, to give them the personal empowerment to know that they have a choice. Um, what, what can you give us some wisdom? Yeah. Oh, and there, I just, as you were saying that, I was thinking, oh, they're so lucky to be in your corner and playing with you. Holy yeah. moly. If you're stuck or identifying as feeling stuck, having someone like Judy or me or another coach or someone that can like sit there and reflect to you because my experience of stuck or being stuck is like a loss of possibility. And oftentimes like it's, you know, I even see this in people who are really in possibility and really believe things are possible. We can only kind of hold the possibility for so long before we start to kind of like go back and be like, oh, maybe I can't do that. Or maybe I just don't have that option. Or maybe that's just not possible for me. Yeah. And so I think the biggest thing in, in feeling stuck is A, to know that it's just a state. It's not actually like, it's just, it's just in your mind. Like physically, you're probably not stuck, exactly. right? But in our minds, we believe that we're stuck. And so that we just keep kind of seeing and reflecting and, and creating this experience of stuckness. And so one of the most powerful things we can do is have somebody that's not just saying yes to us all the time and agreeing to our stories and kind of co-signing on everything that we're saying, because that's just going to reinforce that feeling of being stuck, is to actually have somebody that can reflect to you that you're not and reflect to you different possibilities and ask you questions to kind of get you to kind of look at things. Because really, I think for me, and just I'll speak to my experience, like, um, in moments when I have felt stuck or like there wasn't another possibility, um, I was also really saying that to myself over and over going and like, I'm stuck. I was identifying as that. I was identifying with the circumstance um, and just not really from that place seeing that there was anything else possible, even though there was. And so through even the act of exploring it in conversation with someone, I feel like can, can kind of get us to look at it with fresh eyes and go, okay, well, okay instead of just repeating the same thing to myself, let me take another look. Is there another possibility? Is there another way that I could lovingly and easily, and even with fun or ease or play, create another option, mm. right? Um, and, and I think that the feeling of stuck is also really powerful contrast. Like for me, I had to get with the idea that I was in really firm grip of my own pain and my own stuff yeah. so as to get yeah, through like, and, like, oh, I was fucking holding on like I, and, this, is and me. I, this is who I am I swear this is the only way yeah. um to actually like to get to that place of contrast and really acknowledge because I think that was the biggest piece that this is not what I want like, I don't want to feel this way. I had to get to that point of really saying that even out loud, like, this is not what I desire. So what is it that I do want? And starting to really focus in on that and ask myself some of those questions, because I had been so hyper-focused on this for so long that it just wasn't allowing me to see any other possibilities either. And I think like, um, I often think about this and it just comes back to me all the time is like, I think when we hold on to something really tight, like, you know, if we have an idea, like even if we're feeling stuck and we're like, I really want to be doing this. Um, I have a, a couple of clients right now that are new coaches and they're like, I want clients, right? This is the thing I want. I want clients, right? And they're holding on to this idea so tight. And it's like, if we, if we grab a, a handful of sand off the beach and we try to hang onto it, it just comes right out of your fingers. Like you can't hang onto it. Yeah. But if you just hold your hands like this and kind of cup your hands and allow the sand to just sit in your hand, you can hold that space without this feeling of attachment and, and scarcity and kind of trying to hold on. And so I kind of think of that with the stuck idea too, is if there's something that's over here that you're looking to do and you have this idea that you're not there, just kind of open your hand a little bit, you know, like, like even, even just 1%, like if we open our hand just 1% to something new, it allows us to just, just open that door a little bit, right? Kind of what I said, like, Sometimes it, it doesn't take a lot to start to get unstuck. Yeah. Like if you literally do one different thing, you're unstuck, right? So it's just kind of giving yourself like 1%, like opening that door a little bit, taking one little action or making one little phone call or even just shifting one little idea about yourself can start to move that in that direction. So it doesn't have to be this kind of all or nothing stuck or unstuck. It can be like an in-between, yeah. you know? And so I, I feel like it's, it's that it's those micro movements 
and just really starting to see that the stuck is a way of being. It's not actually your experience might feel that way, but it's not actually true. You're not actually stuck. That's right. Um, you know, and so that, that I feel like can be so freeing, but just hands down, if there's like, if you are identifying as stuck, have someone in your corner, yeah. like have somebody that can reflect to you and, and invite you into a new conversation about it. Cause um, I think it's a gift to, to feel stuck, you know, cause you're at that, that point of contrast, you know? So yeah, there's a new opening. The turning point. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that was kind of my long answer, but I think that, you know, I think that there was some juice in there because oh, I've yeah, seen yeah. a lot in my life. Love, <laughs> it love it. Yeah. I love the analogy about the sand. That's, be that's beautiful. Right? I come back to that a lot because it just reminds me to like not cling and not hold on and not try to control because ultimately like our lives, our world is trying to, to support us. And, and we're like, you know, we're the ones that are making it more complicated, not yeah. we're the ones holding on, not like, you know, the other way around. So, um, yeah, just, just, I guess, just let it be easy is really what I'm saying too. You know, it doesn't have to, um, it doesn't have to be as tough as we think it does, you know? And I think having, having someone to, to share that with you and Judy, I know your, your story is phenomenal too and what you're up to and how you create in your life. And I think having people like that, that you can say, wow, you, you did it. I can do it too. You know, just having people that show you it's possible. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Highly agree. So babe, it's been such a pleasure to have you on. I uh, think that, those people listening are going to take away so many valuable little golden nuggets from this conversation. And I'm so thankful for just, just you. You're amazing. Thanks Judy. Likewise. <laughs> Superstar. I love, I love your questions and stuff too, and the way that you extract the, the lessons out of me. So thanks for all the beautiful questions. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. So how can, let us know where everyone can, can reach out and connect with you because I really want everyone to mm. touch base and follow you and listen to all of the great content and just everything that you're doing is just magic. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, We Are Lady Alpha is the community for ambitious women. Um, it's a ton of fun. We really go deep in that space. Tons of support, really genuine conversations and just really like a great community of women. So it doesn't matter where you're at in that. It just if you identify as somebody who feels ambitious, um, this is a beautiful space for you. And so it's totally free. It's on Facebook. So if you go to weareladyalpha.com, you'll find all the details there and everything. And I'm kind of one of those people that I'm like, go to the website, but also like just reach out to me. Like just send me a message if this resonated with you. I'm a real person. We're real people. You know, this is the internet, which is a beautiful platform, but we're also like real human beings. And I would love to just connect with you um, versus you, you know, just being on a website or something. But um, yeah, so just to preface with that. And also um, I'm launching my new blog. So by the time this probably goes out, I'll, it'll probably be up already. So yeah. Um, I'm super excited about that. So I, that's I am stacyray.com, which is going to be a lot of like my personal adventures, but also just some of my creative expression around a lot of the things that I'm really passionate about and just making a stand for people. So it'll be a ton of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Go and check out Stacy. Connect with her at We Are Lady Alpha and uh, obviously check out her blog. And thanks again, Stace. And uh, I'll see you. You, everyone else really soon. Thank we're you so we're much. Stay connected. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>